Okay, so continuing on with looking at using CSS in our JavaFX applications, the next thing I want to talk about is a couple of the different kinds of selectors that we can use. So the main thing that I've kind of touched on right now is being able to use selectors that allow you to select a particular control somewhere in your JavaFX applications. So say something like a label, a button, or a text field. Uh, or if we consider some of the other ones that we'll be learning about uh, later on, things like the radio buttons, sliders, uh, anything like that, you could imagine that there will be CSS selectors for those as well. Uh, but there are other kinds or other types of selectors you can use besides those. So one example right here is uh, recall that for your scene graphs, you have some kind of uh, highest container, that root node for your application. Uh, and we can actually select that node for uh, applying some kind of style. So in this case, we're going to apply it to the root. Uh, what that means is that we're going to apply our style to uh, essentially everything within the application. So the example we see right here, we're doing this uh, one property, fx font size. Uh, we're setting it to 20 inside of the root selector. So that's going to be applied to uh, be applied to the root node. So that means that every one of the controls in our application will end up having that size of 20. So let's take a quick look at this. So if we come over to NetBeans, we'll continue on with the CSS demo that I've already been using. So we've got a label right now. Let's go ahead and add another control to this and see what happens whenever we apply uh, some rule to the root node, uh, trying to modify the content of multiple different kinds of uh, controls in this. So I'm going to go ahead and add, in addition to the label, let's go ahead and bring in, let's say, a button. So we're going to go ahead and import the button from that uh, scene.control package. We'll then come down to our start method, and we'll go ahead and create that button. So we'll do that right here. So we've got our label. Go ahead and make a button. I'll call it just uh, btn. Let's be equal to a new button. And for this one, uh, let's say this is a fairly generic button, so maybe the content inside of it could just say click me. And then in our H box, we're going to go ahead and include that button in addition to our label. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about things like spacing, padding, or alignment. So when we actually run this, we'll see it positioned just underneath the label. Uh, the primary thing I want to take a look at now is if I come over to my CSS file, so in the style sheet, I have this label right now. Let's go ahead and just briefly comment this out. I'm going to undo that in a moment. And just above it right here, let's go ahead and use the root selector. So that's going to be dot root. Then we've got a pair of curly braces for the body of the selector. And inside of here, we're going to do fx font size. And specifically, I want to specify that this is going to be 20 points. So make sure we have a unit for this. Go ahead and save that and then we'll run this application. And so now our buttons have been made, or the text for both our button and our label has been made much larger. Go ahead and drag this out a little bit. So now we can see we've got our hello world and our click me, both inside of our H box. So because of this, it looks like we'll go ahead and need to uh, adjust the dimensions for our application. Let's go ahead and make a quick fix to that. Let's change this to something more like uh, 450. So make it three times larger than it was before. Uh, take a quick moment to look at that and see how it is. Uh, it looks much better. Okay. So continuing on from here. So one thing to note about this when we're dealing with the uh, that root node selector is that if we write some additional rule in another selector that would seem to kind of contradict that. So in this case, we've got a root and a label selector. Both of these are going to try to modify the font size in some way. So the question then becomes, what will the font size be for labels? Will it be the 10 that was specified in the label selector, or will it be the 20 inside of the root selector? So the way that it's going to work is uh, whatever the most specific selector is, that's going to be the thing that has the highest precedence. So the root node, you can think of that as being the most general, so it's the least specific selector. Uh, the label selector, so something that's specifying a particular kind of control, that will have a higher level of precedence that's more specific. 
So that's the rule that we're going to apply. So if we take another look at this, coming back over here, we'll go ahead and uncomment everything that I had right here now. Uh, make sure that these extra lines are still commented out. Save that. We'll go ahead and run this. And we see now when we do this that our hello world has gone back to being a little bit smaller. So it's using this 14 point, uh, 14 point font size that we specified here instead of the 20 points, uh, which is only being applied to the buttons text now. So another thing to say about our selectors is that we can actually apply the same set of rules to multiple different kinds of uh, controls by simply specifying them as a comma separated list. So in this case, if we want to apply all of the style to both our label and our button, we can just go ahead and do something like this. So let's say that we want to come over here. Maybe we don't want to use this root node, so we'll just go ahead and comment that out. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and have our label. We have a comma. And then we have our button selector, so that's going to be dot button in all lowercase. Go ahead and save that. And then if we run this, we can go ahead and see all of that style being applied to both our uh, our text and our button. And admittedly, it's somewhat hard to make out the border on that because of the highlighting on it. But we do also have the dotted border being applied to our button. Covered our colors. So the next thing that we want to talk about is going to be uh, creating our own classes. So, so far we've seen situations where we can pick the root node or we can pick particular controls, but maybe we want to have a little bit more customization, so a bit more control over precisely which um, items, visual elements are going to have some, uh, some style applied to them. So what we can go ahead and do is we can actually go ahead and just make up our own name. So instead of using any of the names of controls that are uh, these kind of pre-existing names for our CSS, we can go ahead and just come up with one that is uh, completely independent of those. So in this case, we're doing this, uh, this custom name, button black, uh, still following the same general um, uh, there's the same general approach for uh, the naming conventions. So we're going to use button, black, two separate words, going to be separated with a hyphen in all lowercase. Uh, keep in mind that we're still going to have that dot at the front, so this is still going to be a class name of some kind, but in this instance it's going to be a custom class instead of one of the pre-existing classes. Uh, the other thing we need to do is then specify which elements within our application we actually want to apply this custom class to. So. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a method get style class that will then give us whatever the current style class is for that particular control. Uh, and then we can use the add method to go ahead and add a new, uh, a new class to it. So let's go ahead and create the code right here. So we've got our button black. Uh, in order to do this and to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to go ahead and create a second button. So the second button, we'll call this button black. So it's going to be BTN and then the word black with a capital B. So be equal to a new button. Uh, for this one, we'll just go ahead and have it say the same thing. Just say click me. Uh, add a little bit of separation right here, since right here is where I'm going to end up adding the code to, uh, to add that style class to this button black that we have right here. So then back in my style sheet, on the CSS file. Underneath this set of rules, we'll go ahead and create another selector right here. So this will be button black. And right here, we're going to go ahead and put in the, um, the two rules we had. So for this one, we're going to set the background color of the button to black. So the background color is basically, uh, you can kind of see the embellishment of the button. That background color is gonna be changed to black for that. And then we're gonna change the text inside of it to be white so that, that way then uh, we can still see the text because otherwise if we had the black text on a black background it would not be visible to us at all so we'll come over here so 
So we'll have our FX background color, set this to black. We'll then have our FX text fill, and we'll set this to white. So we're just going to be using named colors to accomplish this. And then back over in our Java file, so right here, we're going to take our button black. So grab the control that we just made by its variable name and say get style class. And we're calling this method on it. And then we'll call the add method. And inside of here, we have the string. And in the string, what we're going to put in is going to be just the name of it. So just this button black here. We will exclude this dot, we'll just omit that from it. Because of the fact that since we're adding a style class to this, it is already implied that we'll need that dot anyway, so we don't need to include it. So we're just going to say button dash black. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll also add this to our H box. So BTN black. And at this point, with yet another item being added to this, let's go ahead and increase the size of this a little bit more. Let's bump it, uh, bump it up to 600. Go ahead and save that. And so now when we run this, we see that we've got our click me right here. So you'll notice that it still kept some of the other style. So there's a little bit of overlap with the style that we see over here from this selector. So it's applying things like the font style, it's making it italic, the font weight, it's making it bold. Uh, it's pretty difficult to see at this point, but it's still going to be applying this border style of dotted. The things that it is not applying, uh, most notably, is going to be the text fill right here. So you notice in our first button that we'd made, the text for that is going to be that pinkish color, but the text in our new button is going to be white. So we can see that it's using this right here. And the reason for this is because, again, we have to consider that order of precedence with our rules uh, or with our, our selectors. Uh, in this case, a custom selector like this is going to take precedence over one of these pre-existing selectors like this uh, dot button that we have right here. So the text fill right here that we set to white, that's going to override or take precedence over this uh, text fill here where we're using this uh, hex code for this sort of pinkish color. And then in addition to style classes, so being able to create our own custom classes for uh, our style selectors, we can also create our own custom ID selectors. So the key difference between a class and an ID is that our IDs are meant to be unique. So anytime that we create a, an ID, we want to apply that to exactly one thing or one item in our application. But one thing that we need to keep in mind is that Java doesn't actually do any checking for duplicate IDs. Since this is primarily something that is used between the CSS and the Java code, uh, it can't really do much checking there. So instead, it's going to be your responsibility to avoid giving two elements the same ID. So the example we see here, we're creating this, um, this ID that we call label-error. So we still give it a name. The key difference that lets us know that this is going to be an ID selector and not a class selector is that now, instead of using that dot at the beginning, we're going to be using a uh, pound symbol or a hashtag for it. So in this case, we're applying just one rule for our labels. We're saying label error. So we're saying that we want the text to be red. And then we can see right here, we created our label. And we're using the set ID method to uh, specify a particular ID that we want to associate with this label. So we'll go ahead and minimize this, come over here. So we'll go ahead and create it right here. So I'll create the label error ID selector. So we're going to have that pound symbol and then label error. Then we'll have that pair of curly braces for our body. And then inside of here, we'll just do FX text fill. We'll specify that we want the text to be red. We'll go ahead and save that. And over here, I'll just go ahead and apply it to this label that we have right here. So we've Got this label with the text hello world inside of it. So I'll go ahead and do that one right here between my control declarations and 
setting up the style class for my black button. So right here we're going to say label.setID and we're going to go ahead and set the ID to be that label error. And just like when I was specifying a class, say like this button black class, when I specified my label error ID, again, because of the fact that we're setting an ID, it's already implied that we're going to need this pound symbol. So we can go ahead and omit that right here. So the only thing we have to specify is just going to be the name of this ID. So we can save that and we will run this. And we can see now the text for our label has been changed to red. So again, just like with our custom style classes, our IDs will also take precedence over our, um, our pre-existing classes. Okay, so at this point, this will wrap up everything for the different kinds of selectors. So we took a look at the root node selector, uh, the ability to specify multiple selectors for a single set of rules. Um, discussed a little bit about the precedence of our selectors. Uh, we also took a look at being able to create our own custom style classes or custom ID selectors. Uh, in the next video, we're going to finish up with uh, CSS by talking a little bit about being able to add inline rules for CSS where we could actually specify some of that within the Java code itself.